breaking news. A flood is coming. Lives are at stake. People need to be warned. They need to know the key facts for this emergency. What is the emergency? Where is the affected area? How soon do we need to act? How bad will it be? How certain are the experts? What should we do? CAP is the international standard for communicating those key facts for all types of hazards and across all kinds of media. Picture CAP as a standard business form in paper on a clipboard. According to your role, responder, manager, journalist, school principal, you might need to supplement the key facts, but everyone involved in the emergency should have at least these key facts communicated by a CAP alert. I'm gonna cover four major topics, starting with opportunity and challenge. Much of today's public alerting is based on mass media, such as broadcast radio and television. For many decades, these have been the essential ways to reach people in harm's way. Television stations insert crawl text, and radio stations insert an audio message. This public-private collaboration required decades to implement. It consumes huge, ongoing investments in specialized technology. But this mass media alerting does nothing to reach users of online media. Online media users are missing out on alerts that are carried only by mass media. Now, Google has a solution, Leverage Cap, to deliver alerts to people using Google tools. Here's Google showing the alert of a storm surge in St. John's, Canada. We also see a tornado warning from the U.S. National Weather Service overriding web advertisements for users in the alerting area. Digital billboards carry cap alerts in the United States as well. That's actually a very smart advertising strategy. Cap alerts are now sent directly to in-vehicle navigation systems, Garmin, TomTom, Tom, leading car manufacturers worldwide. These alerts enable drivers to avoid danger areas. It's a mature technology embedded in millions of devices. In all these cases, the official emergency alerts are picked up from a global scale cap alert hub and we see these digital media companies using their own resources to help get those warnings out. There's an amazing surge of innovation around emergency alerting, and it's happening because of the CAP standard. Traditionally, governments implemented a vast range of alerting systems, from local communities to entire nations. Societies everywhere have a patchwork of systems these are often designed just for a particular emergency situation, communicating over particular communications media. Without the CAP standard, it was impossible to achieve all hazard, all media public alerting on broad scales. CAP took emergency alerting beyond this crazy patchwork. With CAP, simple tools can be used to get those emergency alerts to affected people, wherever they are, whatever they are doing. I'd like to highlight certain benefits of CAP. CAP makes it quicker and easier to issue alerts. Alerting authorities without CAP issue alerts by making phone calls, sending faxes, sending emails, posting to web pages, posting to Facebook and Twitter, and so on. These activities consume time, distracting from the mission of composing accurate and actionable alerts. With CAP, a single Alert disseminates quickly over the multiple alerting methods. From the receiver perspective, CAP is the fastest way to get alerts from an alerting authority, and CAP is also less error prone. In a complex emergency, information of many types must be assimilated from many sources over scales ranging from local to national, maybe global. Alerts are a big part of that. Without CAP, this variety makes alerts difficult to get, to use, and to share because they're communicated in so many media and formats. With CAP alerts, information gathering and analysis is much easier. Use of CAP supports this emergency management function called shared situational awareness or maintaining a common operating picture. Here we see CAP alerts being displayed on a map interface. And maps like this help audiences understand complex or evolving emergencies. Trust 
in an alerting system is eroded when people miss out on alerts. Trust is also eroded when people get alerts not intended for them. These happen often with systems based on play text. With CAP, the alerting areas can be precisely defined with polygons or circles in addition to the area description text. Many people in harm's way are underserved with current public alerting because they are blind or deaf or cognitively impaired, or they don't understand the language used in the alert. These people can be better served by exploiting the data in CAP alerts, as well as leveraging automated translation. Now, some types of hazard occur so suddenly that seconds mean the difference between timely life-saving alerts and alerts that just arrived too late. Examples, earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunami, flash floods, volcanoes, landslides, terrorism. CAP alerts can be posted immediately and then immediately disseminated, sometimes within seconds. Also, the CAP alerts are digital. That enables immediate action not only by people, but by devices such as sirens, highway signs, train controls, and other automated mechanisms that help save lives. Multiple authorities get involved in a complex, extensive, or revolving emergency. So scientific and technical agencies are expert at characterizing a hazard threat, but not empowered to instruct people on actions such as evacuation. So their CAP alert might say, monitor local media for instructions from your civic authority. Now the civic authority can instruct people on actions such as evacuation. So their CAP alert can quote the scientific and technical agency and then include those instructions on evacuation routes. When an emergency is complex or extensive, it's also common to have nested or overlapping jurisdictions. Use of CAP by all alerting authorities as the emergency unfolds helps ensure those key facts are communicated coherently. I can show some examples of CAP-enabled alerting systems that I know about personally. Of course, this is only a tiny proportion of CAP systems worldwide. My opening slide showed a flood emergency. Here we see CAP used in the International Flash Flood Guidance System. Here's India's CAP-based Integrated Disaster Early Warning Platform used by disaster management authorities. Aggregation proceeds from the village and city level through the district and state levels and up to the national level. All mobile network operators, as well as All India Radio, are integrated. Support for English, Hindi, Malayalam, and Tamil allows 65% of the population to get alerts in their regional language. China's CAP-enabled alerting gets warnings from different agencies and releases them to the public over television, radio, mobile, internet, and others. It includes one national, 31 provincial, 343 municipal, and 2015 county centers. China's CAP newsfeed is aggregated as well into these global scale CAP alert hubs. Let me conclude this sampling with CAP uptake globally. Today, about 90% of the world's population lives in a country with at least one national CAP newsfeed operating or in testing. Those show as green and yellow on this map. The countries in gray haven't even begun to implement CAP as far as I know. A large percentage of these are developing countries. And sadly, those are countries where people are especially vulnerable to disasters. So recognizing this CAP implementation gap, international organizations, international NGOs, and international companies involved in emergency alerting are urged to endorse the call to action on emergency alerting, to scale up efforts to ensure that by 2025, all countries have the capability for effective authoritative emergency alerting that leverages CAP. Here are the logos from the 19 endorsements so far. This call to action goal is actually very achievable because it's actually easy for countries to implement CAP at no cost with nothing to install. For example, anyone can try out the free CAP editor tool as a guest. To actually publish alerts though, the alerting authority has to assign persons who get password protected roles. 
Many commercial companies have remarkable camp services. Google Public Alerts brings users relevant emergency alerts through everyday services like Google Search, Google Maps, Android push notifications. AccuWeather has integrated publicly available warnings. AccuWeather apps and their partner apps reach 1.5 billion people globally. The weather company distributes meteorological alerts and forecasts, powering over 2 billion global mobile devices. And Medio Blue offers a similar suite of services. The IBM Intelligent Operations Center for Emergency Management supports CAM. So does Microsoft City Next. And those CAP alerts are used by security services like Pinkerton Global Risk Group. There's more to say about CAP alert hubs. A CAP alert hub makes it easy to get alerts from multiple sources at a single location. This is really important because there's already many thousands of CAP alert feeds. The hub just aggregates the CAP feeds published by the alerting authorities and republishes those alerts almost as soon as they are first published. It's important though to emphasize the CAP alert hub provides only a copy of the alert. It does not have the role of an alerting authority. You think of CAP alert hub as a publisher rather than an originator or editor. The United States Integrated Public Alert and Warning System is a CAP alert hub. It aggregates CAP alerts from more than 1,600 federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial alerting authorities. With so many CAP sources available, it's essential to offer this consolidated CAP news feed at national scale. And this IPAUSE feed is aggregated into the global scale CAP alert hubs. The Medio Alarm System is operated on behalf of 37 European National Weather Services and publishes a CAP feed specific to each nation. This aggregation of CAP news feeds serves European scale needs while also serving each nation's needs. The Medio Alarm National CAP feeds are aggregated by global scale CAP alert hubs as well. Here's one of those global scale CAP alert hubs. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Cross and Societies, IFRC, offers this as a free source of published CAP alerts. IFRC Alert Hub leverages these emergency alerts for all manner of emergency preparedness and response activities at all scales, city, country, global. Expected consumers of IFRC Alert Hub include the Red Cross and Red Crescent National Societies, news organizations, telecommunications providers, international and national emergency managers, and disaster relief organizations, among many others. The WMO Alert Hub is another CAP Alert Hub at global scale. It now aggregates emergency alerts from 157 CAP Alert feeds published by 108 countries, territories, and other sources. The link shows those currently active. WMO Alert Hub is also a core component of WMO's Global Multi-Hazard Alerting System, GMAT. Here's a recent headline. On 23 March, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, called for an action plan, quote, to ensure every person on Earth is protected by early warning systems within five years, end quote. BBC reports that this could cost 1.5 billion US dollars. Among the UN agencies, WMO will lead development of that action plan. WMO is going to present that action plan at the Climate Change Conference of the Parties this November in Egypt, COP27. That action plan should build on the world's cap-enabled emergency warning systems, as you've just seen in this presentation. So this concludes my presentation. Here are links to some CAP videos. Please feel free to contact me about anything related to CAP. Thank you.